in a million. I think we got it, Clay. Now, tell me how to find Bacon Mug's secret files. Huh? Bacon Mug's secret files. You know, the ones with all his dastardly plans. I mean, that's the kind of thing we can expect to find you, right? It is true that if I did have secret plans, they would also almost certainly be dastardly, yes. Okay. So? Sheila? I don't, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I mean, this is your office, isn't it? It's supposed to be a job or something? Hey, give me a break. I've been filled with coffee most of my life. What do I know from computers? I mean, most of the time I just move the arrow around so it looks like I'm doing something. Hey, Sheila, I was going to run down to the snack bar. Just wanted to see if you wanted anything. Get over here, Jasper. Okay, so we're not dumb people or mugs here, right? I mean, how hard could this be? Suggestions? Oh, what about doing a Spotify? I think that's right. Try up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. If we're looking for a thing in a certain spot, wouldn't that be what doing a Spotify is for? Down, Look, first of all, none of that makes any sense. And second of all, all this whispering is turning me into a crazy person. Got it? Yep, I got about it. Not to interrupt the think tank, but might I suggest the folder labeled Secret Files? Group so we can figure out what our next move is going to be. Jasper, Sheila, you two, play it cool. This thing is far from over. Good morning, guys. Well, let me try to explain before we get to what we're going to talk about today where this all ends up. So obviously, we're only looking at another five days of school or so before you have your exam simulation, and then those of you who are going to be preparing for the exam will have to get ready for that. So I'm really trying to think about landing the plane nice and smooth at the end of, and this metaphor is useless, but landing, it's a metaphor. Landing the plane nice and smooth at the end of the runway so that you can end with something that you, um, that you can work with when you move on. By the way, make sure juniors who are watching this video, check an update that I posted yesterday that has a letter about some dual enrollment stuff you need to consider. So where we're gonna end is with the concept of summation, the summation symbol, which is gonna be really important for you when you get into calculus. So we're taking small steps. You may have noticed the last couple of days, and I'm sure you're not complaining about it, we're really pretty short and simple, but that's because I want us to end right in this certain spot, and so I just wanna make sure we get there at the right time. So now we've talked about finding these formula and finding a certain term based on looking for the pattern. Hopefully that made sense to you. If it did not, come see me at live conferences today. So now we're gonna sort of put all these pieces together and use it to do what's called finding a partial sum. And all that means is, if we plug something in, for every term, we get this, I mean, for everything we plug in as a domain, we get this out as a term, we get it out as a result. Where this type of math becomes useful is when we repeat a process, whether that's a factory process or a biological process, and we want to know after how much time or after how much input our output is going to be. And that's basically what we mean here by finding a partial sum. We're going to let something run for a certain amount of time and then stop it and see how much we have. So we're going to introduce a new symbol, if you will, here. That is S. And it's easy because that just means sum. And this is S sub N. So in other words, sum up to term N. Whatever that term is, we're going to add all those things together. And that is really not hard. It just means we're going to do what we've been doing before. We're just now going to add all the terms together once we find them. It really is that simple. So let's take a look at what we got here. So we have A sub N, our first series. That's equal to 1 over N. Pretty simple here and they want us to find S sub three. In other words, the sum of the first three terms. Okay, easy enough to do. So what's the first one gonna be? Well, what's A sub one gonna be? Well, that's one over one or one. A sub two, one over two or one half. And then A sub three is one third. This one's really, really easy. So the sum of this is just adding these three things together. One plus one half plus one third. 
Now, obviously, you know how much I love talking about common denominators. It's just one of my favorite things in the world to do. So obviously we need common denominators to add all of these. So that's six over six plus three over six plus two over six, which is gonna give us a sum here of 11 over six. Pretty simple for the most part. But I hope you realized yesterday and the day before that not all of these series necessarily increase by a certain pattern as, they, um, as the terms increase, right? Sometimes we see other things happen. Sometimes we see things flip back and forth. Sometimes we see them go up and then down. So we'll see that here. So here's our second one. B sub n equals, here's what that formula is. That's negative one to the n power. Remember we were talking about that yesterday in that other complicated example. Times two to the n minus one and we want S sub five, which is to say we're gonna find the first five output terms and then we're just gonna add those terms together. So let's see what we get. So let's start with B sub one. All right, well, negative one to the first power is negative one. So far so good, okay? Let's take a look at the second part. Two to the one minus one or two to the zero power, which is one. That's a lot of jumbling there, but so we get negative one times one. So B sub one is negative one. Okay, let's repeat the process with two. What is negative two squared? I'm sorry, ugh, let's try that again. B sub two, what is negative one? Oh, it is squared. I think my brain was broken there for a second. What is negative one squared? Okay, well that gives us one. Negative one times negative one is one, okay? Two to the two minus one or first power. So two to the first power is just two. So one times two is two. Let's try it with three. Hopefully now you've gotten that we can sort of skip the steps on, on the negative part. If we have an even one term, then we know our, our value is gonna be positive one here and we can disregard it. And if it's an odd term, we know it's gonna be negative one, so we just need to make our answer negative. So just trust me on that, and let's take a look at the rest. So let's go with B sub three. Two to the N minus one, all right? Three minus one is two, so that's two squared. So we got four sitting right here. But remember, this odd numbered into, uh, exponent for negative one means that's gonna be negative, so we get negative four. Pretty simple. Hopefully you can see the pattern here. So now we're going to be looking at 2 to the 4th, that's going to be 8. Negative 1 to the 4th is still just 1, so that's just going to be 8. And I'm just going to write this one down and count on you to be able to make sense of it. Okay? Follow each of those steps. We've now found our first five terms. So then the last job is pretty easy. Just add all those things together. Negative 1 plus positive 2 plus negative 4 plus positive 8 plus negative 16 gives us negative 11. Again, short and sweet, not that much to it, but that's all because I wanna end next week in a really comfortable place. Once again, if any of this doesn't make sense or anything from previous in the week, come and see me at live conferences. If not, I hope you have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.